Hello, for the next installment of this very um, unedited, unfiltered, <laughs> whatever this is, video series on uh, making plastic heads into planters, mannequin heads. Uh, so I'm the last one, what we did was I took the grinder, ground around the edge, and if I can find my grinder, there it is. Uh, so I put it away cleaned up just a little bit while I wasn't seeing you. So I took the edge of this, ran it around the outside. Le, 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 le. As I was doing so, um, I had it on about medium speed so that it wouldn't completely melt the plastic, but cut the plastic. It still melted it somewhat. And as you know, the color, or the, the color, the smell, <laughs> color, smell, it's all the same thing. The smell of plastic burning is so pleasant and it got all up in my eyes and all up in my nose and I was blowing, you don't want to know what was coming out of my nose, but uh, it was basically plastic like dust, which is just not good. So what I did was taking off the lid I kind of had an aha moment afterwards, whoopsies, let me put it back on correctly, of, so I kind of like this shape, but I gotta really keep closer in mind the whole fact that it's gonna be a planting. So all of this upper space, when I take it off, all of this area doesn't make any sense for me to be coming down on the sides. Hmm. Yeah, so this planter is gonna be a little weirder. I do like the glow that you get. Let me turn off this light here. That's pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna do something with that eventually, with that idea. Um, we'll see. I got, I'm gonna turn this light back on. There we go, that's better, hi. Um, and I wish I could do something with these parts. They don't like really speak to me at all as to what I could do with them. But so for now they're going in the trash. If later on in my life I figure out what I'm gonna do with them, it'll be too late because they'll be in the trash and gone. But who knows how, how um, soon or late um, the inspiration will come to me. Uh, probably while I'm sleeping, which it usually does. So. Use one of these guys. It worked fine, it was just kind of slow. So the grinder I definitely liked. Uh, either way though, actually works for me. So definitely lesson learned that if I'm gonna do the cut, it needs to come across here or just be a back part of it. So I got a couple um, more of these little guys to show you. So here's a brand new one that I just got. I know, I know, I know, I know. There's, I, I think I have a problem. Hard plastic, haha, -ha. cool, huh? So this is a really cool one. Uh, it's hollow completely, so I'm gonna have to do something to weight down the bottom, because it's gonna be outside. So I'll figure out something to, something solid to pour in there, maybe the cement stuff that I got, which I did receive, by the way, and it's right here. So it's not done by quick, quick Crete, it's called Sculpt Crete. Um, I'm really excited to use this. So I will show you um, what I'm gonna do with it. Works like clay, hardens like concrete. So the cool part about this, and I was talking to Lee about, my husband Lee, about this tonight. The way I'm gonna do this for these videos is I only have an hour to work with this stuff. So the videos that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do three videos and they're gonna be 20 minutes a piece. It's gonna be one project split into three videos because you don't wanna be sitting there for an hour. Um, I mean, fast forward works great. And with me, I'm sure you've used it a number of times already. So what I'm gonna do though, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to use this stuff, get it goopy. You gotta wear gloves. I'm not that happy about because I like being able to feel my medium, but so I'll have an hour to do it. So it's gonna be two, three 20 minute uh, installments why did I say increments? Installments of Sculptcrete. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on. Whoopsies, not this guy. Not that guy. This guy. 
and I got a new, um, uh, and I got another one, another out of foam today that has the long neck similar to this one, but is in the styrofoam. A terrible sound. So the concrete will be sculpted. So I'll cut the hole first. I'll figure out what the, the um, hole is going to be. And that one I think is going to, on this, is going to be a jagged edge mm, instead of the smooth edge, like we were, I was talking about in a previous one. So you put it on and you have options. So you can either just sort of have it be what it is here. This has nice sort of deep slits for the eyes and just leave it sort of a mimicking what the shape is already, which I like this shape a lot. The nose got smushed during transit. The new one, the really got the face really got smashed, but um, it's still there. It's a very actually very very pretty face. So this one, oh my God, that reminds me of um, Pee Wee's Big Top or Pee Wee's Playhouse, where he does that with the balloon. I won't do that for five minutes. Um, but anyway, so it's going to be, I'll do the video of hollowing it out first, making it into it, drilling. So it's already got a hole through it. So we'll see how far up that hole goes. I think it goes to the base up here, like right around here. And then using the that sculpt crete over it so I can sculpt beyond the face. I've seen videos where um, this woman, she does beautiful beautiful sculptures. Eh, eh, I don't know about that. I haven't sculpted in so long. So, but she like builds these beautiful faces using this just sort of as the the foundation to, to build on just for, you know, where do you want things to be? I also have all those inspiration photos that I took that I found online that I'll be using, um, which are really cool. And so I could use those to inspire me to rethink the shape of the face with the sculpt creek, because I can do really anything I want with that. I can widen it, I can elongate it, I can cut it off. There's one where it's like it's a statue that fell and then it has plants growing out of the top, which I, I think is brilliant. So I could just cut right through. So there's lots and lots of options. Um, the sculpt creek will also, I'll put inside the uh, space for the plant, which will be nice because it'll keep everything sealed and I'll make sure that I have the hole that goes down. So that was the other thing, the holes to go down the center. The more I think about it, the less I like just having the one hole in the center um, in that they are going to be outside. They're going to have soil and it's, I think it's going to compact enough so that they're really not going to drain. So what I've done in the past with, when I use plastic pots outside is instead of just leaving that one hole in the center that clogs up and doesn't drain anymore, is putting a hole like here. So the bottom, if the bottom of, of the whole thing is, let's say here, right? I put a hole here. So you've got a little bit of space where water can stay, especially when we lived in Kansas City, because it would get so blessed hot during the summer and dry out. So I wanted some little reservoir, but not enough so that it would get to be just rotting the roots. So I would put a hole up above the bottom line here, and then up above the bottom line here, and then probably one up and through here so that it drains. Now that drainage is also going to, when you think of it, this is a cool thing, any of the minerals that are coming through the soil will then discolor the concrete. No matter if you paint it or not, it's gonna create discoloration. So I could put it in really like the holes in creative areas for watering. I could do them in the eyes. I could do it right in the middle of the mouth or even up in the nose. And that there that, that, that way, when I water, it'll have that center hole where the majority of it will drain out or some of it will drain out. But then if, when I do really water it heavy, like with, you know, a hose, <clears throat> the um, water could come out the eyes, the nose, or the mouth, or under the chin, and leave those streaks, and eventually the minerals will discolor, or not discolor as much as colorize, um, and really kind of leave coloring on the face. So I think that's really cool. I think it's really cool options over the years for it to do that. Uh, I do plan on leaving these out in the weather. So that'll be an interesting thing to see how they weather the weather. So looking forward to this, that'll be in the future. 
I am going to, my plan is um, to actually finish a couple of these full way through um, before moving into the Sculpt Crete and, and really using these, all right? So with that in mind, I wanted to get back to this one because this is, the edge is very, very rough. If you can see that, focus right in on it. Yeah, it's really rough. So I don't want to leave it like that because it's kind of uggy and it kind of bothers me. So I got some sandpaper and my thought is that if I can just get rid of the roughness, I can also see how effective, how effective the sandpaper is on the plastic to see if maybe I can also shape it a little bit using the sandpaper. So it's working. Of course, I'm shaking you as I do this. But so that is working just fine. I can also take my knife, or oh, actually putty knife, because it's stronger. Maybe scrape some, oh yeah, this works great. Scrape some of that edge off of there. So it's not quite so gross. I know it's going to be planter, but I, I don't want it to be a... Oh, look, that looks like crap planter. I want it to be a... Oh, that's cool and artistic and funky, and I want to make one myself have a planter. So, um, and it's my planter, so I can do this if I want to. Um, you may just want to leave it, you know, rough, 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 like really rough. Um, it's up to you. I mean, come on, it's... This is what this is all about, is like doing what makes you feel good with fun, which you get a kick out of doing while you're doing it, and be inspired to do something wacky and outside the box. So I have this thing where um, over the years, I wanted to tell you about, over the years, many, many years of my life, I've always been kind of obsessed with how creepy dolls can be. So these are like neglected dolls. Like we go antiquing a lot, right? Love to go antiquing. Love stuff that's mid-century. Um, looking at, you know, how incredibly creative people have been throughout all the years and over the decades and how different decades had different aesthetics and what was considered to be cool or new and on trend and bizarre and whatever. So edgy, you know, all that stuff. And now we look at it and we're like, oh, totally not edgy. Been there, done that. It's not very creative. But when you really look at it in context, you see, you know, designers really were just thinking outside the box all the time. If you think of like atomic, like the atomic age or whatever they call it, atomic style from uh, mid-century style, that Jetsons look, how incredibly forward thinking all of that was. So think about the Jetsons. If you've ever, never seen the Jetsons, watch some episodes of the Jetsons. It's, they're really very, very funny, and very entertaining, very colorful. Um, but the Jetsons had video phones ha -ha, in their house. And here we are. So a lot of these things are ideas that started out uh, in cartoons, in you know, House of the Future, all electric and all that kind of stuff. And... Um, and that atomic age type of stuff with the cats and the, if you've never, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up sort of uh, atomic mid-century modern cats. Oh, they're so funky. They're so cool. Um, very, very stylized. My sister, Terry, actually is doing, has discovered this like talent that she's got. She does needle felting. Um, and I mean, she's a talented gal anyway. She's like, the rest of my family, you know, just inspiring, incredibly inspiring. Um, but she happened upon, because my mom had started doing some of it um, brilliantly, needle felting, because my mom paints and draws and and is just incredible, um, incredible artist. Uh, so she, my Terry, my sister, started needle felting as well as a project to see if she liked it. Holy crap, the stuff she does. Holy crap. Uh, she did this really cool lighthouse for me because Lighthouse Life Coaching is um, one of my businesses and uh, it's for my life and wellness coaching. And she did this fantastic 
<laughs> she's like, it's a hot plate. It's meant it's supposed to be used. It's like, you know, that size and you're supposed to put hot stuff on it on the, not a hot plate, whatever you would call that. Um, made out of wool, needle felted. There's no way in hell I'm going to put something hot on that thing. I know it won't hurt it. I get it. I know what it's for. But for me, when I opened it, 100% art. And it's something that I'm going to put in a shadow box. I'm going to pin into a shadow box and I'm going to put it on the wall because it's absolutely beautiful. So it's one of those things where, you know, the artistry or the, the, the talent that you have, who knows where it's going to manifest or what it's going to manifest doing if you don't try funky, weird things and, um, and, and find out just by mistake that, holy crap, I have a real talent for this. And I keep telling her, I'm like, Terry, you got like, holy crap, the stuff that you're doing is really cool. So she's been doing mid-century modern stuff. This comes all the way back around to where I was talking about the cats. And so there's these funky, like, um, oh my God, super stylized cats. And she's doing one that she sent me a picture of. She's in the process of doing a um, sort of like what she sent me, like a square for a friend of hers. It's going to be a picture uh, with needle felting of this atomic cat. And it's, she she's doing the atomic um, MCM, mid-century modern type of idea. So cool. I mean, just so inspiring. And I'm like, like well, heck yeah, I'm going to go down in the basement and I'm going to work on my creepy heads. So for a very long time, I've, I've always been fascinated and kind of a little obsessed with these dolls that you find in the antique stores. I mean, they're like dirty and grungy and neglected and sad. And somebody loved it at one point and they've just become creepy. And I think because of my age, I'm 52 now, 52. Oh. Um, there were those movies, the Chucky movies and all of that stuff, Bride of Chucky, all that crap that came out. There was also one from like really early on about this little voodoo doll guy who comes to life in this woman's house and like runs at her with a knife with a state literally like I think it's a serrated steak knife right so all those traumas from when I was a kid of watching stuff <laughs> I probably shouldn't have been watching but I loved it um and you probably did too but so those dolls when I see them it's just one of those things where you, you can imagine it you know sitting up and just being like blah, 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 I'm looking at you you know type of crap so anyway so I've been obsessed with these creepy dolls forever. And I've been taking pictures of them for a long time on Instagram. I go through phases where I'll take a ton of them, where I'll see them at the, the antique stores and I'll just see them everywhere. And then I don't see them for a while. It's like, what happens to these dolls that I don't see anymore at the antique store? Where did they go? Did they actually sell them or did they figure out, oh, I've had it here for three years and nobody's ever going to buy this thing, so I put it in the landfill. Well, I never buy them. I know, I don't buy them. I'm being really good about not buying them because a man my age buying creepy dolls for the sake of buying creepy dolls would probably be fun, like going through a divorce a, a long time ago. So I do know the limit of not buying the stupid things. Although my husband, he wouldn't divorce me for that. He'd just roll his eyes and go, oh, it's another Patrick thing. Um, but instead, so, instead I take pictures of them. And then I use the program or the app to, um, to really pop the color and see and help people see what I see when I see those things, which is like the vivid colors, the proportions are completely out of whack. They're dirty and grungy. The um, expressions are like weird. And I just wonder about some of these artists or people who need these things. I know they're for kids and kids see things differently. I mean, I did when I was a kid. Um, but as an adult seeing them, they are just freaking creepy. So that's what sort of got me obsessed with the whole mannequin head. They're very hard to find, mannequin heads are. Oh my gosh, I almost never see them. And when I do see them, they're being used for hats and stuff like that. And the mannequin heads can be just as creepy. So I gave up on finding them in the wild, if you will. I got really lucky on this one. They were awesome, an awesome find. And that hair is actually fabulous, let me tell you. Um, totally real hair, incredible. 
Um, but so I gave up on it because I really didn't expect to find them at a reasonable price. Like I was telling you about being at the, um, the elephant trunk and the one woman asking $25 for one of these. That was like gross, grungy, blah. And I don't know what she was thinking other than maybe she was desperate or she thinks that the housing market is affecting the, the head mannequin head market. I don't know. Um, <laughs> nice joke. Uh, anyway, yeah, I know. This is a stretch. But um, so I started that obsession with heads and dolls and weird things. So I was trying to do it originally where I was going to make them all into lamps because I got obsessed with this one person who makes them into lamps and they're you know you'll see you've seen it on Facebook or Instagram or the whatever face of gram apocalypse the thing that's out now the app the app whatever the current one is that um they probably cycle through twice a year once a year of these lamps that have just the you to see the eyes and you know, like the mouth and there's somebody put a bulb inside of a, a doll head right um with the led bulbs you can do that now that's why i'm so obsessed with like how this comes out with the light from above that glow is very cool very creepy like something you're not going to have on your kids nightstand unless they really enjoy that kind of thing right um but run of the mill joe is not going to really do that to their child with unless the child wants it so here we are next stage is going to be what for this guy i don't actually know i think a next stage is going to just have to be painting drilling holes and leaving it as is because i kind of think that the soil is only going to come to here right so maybe i need to paint the inside of here especially so this inside is definitely gonna have to be painted I don't think I want to leave it the flesh-ish, the super white person flesh color. Um, it's so pink. It's like so pink. So I'll figure out what I'm going to do with that later, but that's where this one stands right now. All right, and that can go on the table. So the next one, jumping into the next one, I've got another plastic one, and this is a true Disney princess. Right, I kind of painted the crap out of her, but it was kind of really fun and satisfying. So she's got silky fake hair, which I will comb out. I will not subject you to that because it's actually really boring. It's even more boring than me just going on about stuff and and scrabbling at a, um, at a head. But so she's got this great hair though that I want to use. I definitely want to use. So for the back of her head, her hair, does not cover that much of her head. So if you look at this, there's, I mean, if you really tighten, or if I can tighten it down so you can see, there's not a lot of her head. I mean, proportionately, I guess it is, but her face part is ginormous compared to how high it goes in the back because you're really not supposed to look at the back, um, which is cool, which I really like. But I like the hair and I want to use, keep and use the hair. I'm going to like braid it so that it stays tight to the head so that plants can come out of it. So I need to figure out, and here we go, you can see the scalp. What they did with the scalp is interesting. So if you can see that, there are little plugs of hair. Let me see if I can focus on this little plug yeah, there you go cool right as opposed to the other one which has hair completely sewn through it you see how it's like almost like a natural scalp just freaky um so she's got these rows of hair that's been through the plastic that they use up here is just as hard as around here but it's oddly enough it's less pinky pinky and i think this is the original color of the plastic and then when they painted her they painted her this i don't know if you can even tell that it's really pink this color and it's like maybe the pink of the end of my finger it's super pink um 
anyway, which, uh, you know, leads us into a whole other discussion or a whole discussion that should be had. So her head does swivel, so you can give her attitude, and it does move a little bit on a pivot. So if I hold this down, you see how it moves on a pivot. She also turns, which just adds to her attitude that she can be throwing. Um, so she's got this forelock, which I like the forelock, and we'll do something with that. So I am going to, I think, just do a small hole in the back so that it's more about her hair, which I'm going to streak. Use the base white of the hair, streak, and I think she's the, the, the um, from Frozen, actually. That's actually who she is. I don't remember her name from the movie. Loved the movies, though. Movies work really good. Um, and then I'm going to streak the hair. I will only take out... There's actually a delineated, like, weird circular area up here, which was from the mold. It's probably how they popped the mold out of the, the machine. Um, but it's a perfect circle. But it's only a small one. It's only this big. And that's what I'm going to cut out. And I'll do that in the next session or the next um, installment, whatever you call it. And then she'll just have a plant coming out of the back. We'll have all this great hair that we can play with, braid along the edge to, to um, sort of incorporate it into it, do whatever we do. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the face. And because she actually has some good features um, that are kind of, this is weird. This whole nose thing with no bridge is just... It's very cartoony, which is great. So I'll make it very cartoony. Make it maybe make it creepy cartoony mm. instead. We'll see. Or maybe I'll make her look like stone. That might be kind of cool. I did get the flex stone um, spray. This might be actually a good one for it. It'll soften the features a little bit, a lot of it, and um, you'd still be able to see it, but it wouldn't look like plastic necessarily as much as a sculpture. All right, so that'll be the next installment, and I hope you enjoyed this a little bit, and um, I will talk to you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.